Now, I'm not one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicles Speaks. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes. Look at you. My intentions today was to work on a completely different story. I'm actually windied out, but I do get alerts every time Wendy Williams' case has an update. Last night, the alert that I got disturbed me to my core. I tried to ignore it, y'all, but someone somewhere is really trying to Britney Spears your girl, Wendy Williams. Wells Fargo keeps mentioning guardianship, guardianship, Wendy being incapacitated. Child Wendy and her attorneys was like, who? Wendy? Not Wendy. Child, they weren't privy to any of this information. Feel how you want about this woman, but she does not deserve this. Now, I'm putting this information out there in hopes that this information will be exposed and she could be rallied behind like they eventually did Britney Spears and save this lady because this is crazy. Man, oh man. But before we get into all of that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any of this tea. Now, let's get back into it. So there are videos out there if you need a complete breakdown of what's going on click on the link in the top right however a quick breakdown okay so boom wendy williams banks with wells fargo has been banking with them for years wendy williams has millions of dollars inside of her account she's been able to access those funds with no problem wendy williams has an account manager named lori Scheller who works at wells fargo wendy and lori have been working together for 15 years wendy felt that lori was not handling her funds correctly so she fired lori all of a sudden lori says that wendy is not of sound mind and she does not deserve to have her funds. Wendy's funds were frozen. For two weeks, Wendy was not able to touch her funds or make any deposits or any withdrawals. She couldn't even see what was in the bank. Wendy Williams went to the bank over a dozen times, told them that she needed her money. She was gonna be in default of some bills. Wells Fargo said, look, you need to go and get you a power of attorney. Once she got the power of attorney, had all the documents notarized, they still wouldn't give her her money. Now they're duking it out in court. Wells Fargo has responded to Wendy Williams' claims and man, oh man, I did not expect to read what I read. Y'all want to hear it? Here it goes. Dear Justice Bluff, this firm represents Wells Fargo Clearing Services Incorporated doing business as Wells Fargo Advisors. The named responded in the above proceeding. We are writing to ensure that the court is aware of our representation and to facilitate our participation in any application by petitioner for a provisional remedy. A courtesy copy of our notice of appearance is enclosed. We also want to inform the court that Wells Fargo has filed a petition in guardianship part for the appointment of a guardian of the property of the petitioner herein under article 81 of the mental hygiene law let's go into that this particular law is for guardianship for incapacitated people in new york under article 81 article 81 of new york's mental hygiene law authorizes a court to appoint a guardian to manage the personal and or financial affairs of a person who cannot manage for himself or herself because of incapacity. Not all Article 81 guardians, here and after guardians, in New York have the same powers. Guardianship orders are specifically tailored so that the powers that are granted to the guardians are those that are specifically necessary to meet the needs of the person who is incapacitated. For example, a person may not be able to pay their own bills or manage their money, but may have the ability to make health care decisions. In such a case, a court might appoint a guardian with powers that are limited to financial management. Let me just preface this by saying I spoke to someone yesterday that knows Wendy personally that said all of this information about her health is not true. Now let's continue to read. We would welcome the opportunity to provide your honor and opposing counsel with a copy of the guardianship petition, but would like to do so under seal or in another manner that will preserve the confidentiality nature of guardianship proceedings. To summarize, without divulging too much on the public record, Wells Fargo has strong reason to believe that the petitioner is the victim of undue influence and financial exploitation. The petitioner, Wendy, is an established client of Wells Fargo and notably 15 years with a particular financial advisor, Lori Schiller. That's very important. She's been working with Lori for 15 years and the moment that she fired her as her financial advisor, Wendy is deemed 
unable to handle her own accounts. They go on to say that Lori is a 23 year veteran of the financial service industry with an unblemished record. Wells Fargo is relying not only on reports of the financial advisor who has recently witnessed telltale signs of exploitation, including the petitioner's own expressed apprehensions, but also upon other independent third parties who know the petitioner well and share these concerns. Who are the third parties that y'all are sharing this lady's information with? Isn't that illegal? Anyway, they go on to say the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, which regulates financial service companies such as Wells Fargo, has become increasingly aware of these types of problems and has encouraged financial institutions to be alert to possible exploitation of their clients and to take preventative action where possible. This is consistent with New York State Social Service Law, Section 473, which encourages measures to mitigate improper use of adults' funds, properties, or resources by another individual, including but not not limited to fraud, false pretenses, embezzlement, conspiracy, forgery, falsifying records, coerced property transfer, or denial of access to assets. FINRA Rule 2165, as recently amended, authorizes a financial institution to place a temporary hold on the disbursement of funds or securities where such activity is suspected. That is precisely what Wells Fargo has done here, pending a determination in the guardianship part concerning its client's capacity. As noted, we stand ready to provide your honor with the record that will be furnished to the guardianship part. We respectfully suggest to preserve the confidential interest of the alleged incapacitated person as contemplated by Article 81, that the records in the instant proceeding be sealed, at least pending the outcome of the Article 81 proceeding, or that an alternative protocol be established to preserve confidentiality in the interim. We note that all Although the current proceeding is styled as one in aid of arbitration under CPLR Article 75, we are unaware of any pending demand for arbitration or pending FINRA arbitration between these parties. Wells Fargo is merely a stakeholder in this proceeding. It has no interest in the outcome and seeks only to follow the anti-exploitation guidelines of FINRA and the state of New York for the protection of the financial interest and confidentiality of its clients. We have little doubt that regardless of the outcome of the Article 81 proceeding, Wells Fargo will have demonstrated a good cause for acting in the cautionary manner in which it is proceeding. We appreciate the court's consideration. I just find it really funny that Miss Schiller has dealt with Wendy for 15 years. Wendy has been in a sober facility. Wendy has passed out on stage. Not neither of those times did you say that this lady was not able to handle her own funds. However, the moment she ends up firing you, now all of a sudden the lady is of unsound mind. Like, are you serious? Okay, so then Wendy's attorney responded with a long email. I'm not gonna go all into it, but I do wanna read the last two paragraphs so we can kind of go over this guardianship information. So she goes on to say, additionally, while we have reviewed opposing counsel Council's letter dated February 9th, 2022, a copy of which is enclosed herein, referencing a guardianship proceeding concerning our client. We have not been notified of any such proceeding and have no knowledge of same. Nonetheless, petitioner denies that she is the victim of undue influence and financial exploitation, despite respondents' assertion that its suspicions are genuine. Their decision to deny petitioner access to her financial assets for weeks without providing her or her counsel with adequate explanation or evidence to support Support its decision and their decision to wait until petitioner filed an emergency petition for a preliminary injunction before pursuing or notifying petitioner that it had pursued a guardianship proceeding gives pause for concern about respondents intentions. Although Mr. Pikus, who happens to be Wells Fargo attorney, states that his client's actions are for the protection of the financial interest and confidentiality of petitioner, his client's delay in resolving this matter and their denial in allowing petitioner to pay her debts or even access her current account statements is in fact harming and not protecting those very same interests. Moreover, and repeatedly stated in our filing and in this letter, her inability to access her financial assets has caused her to be in breach of ongoing financial obligations, including a judicially approved settlement agreement and court order related thereunto. And I'm thinking about what she has to pay to Kelvin. Additionally, to address opposing counsel's concern regarding the styling of this matter, the current proceeding is styled as one in aid of pending arbitration under Article 75 of the CPLR and that New York CPLR 7502C permits this court to entertain an application for a preliminary injunction in connection with an arbitration that is pending or that is to be commenced inside or outside the state. Should there still be cause for concern, we are happy to amend the caption
portion of the proceeding so as to clarify the purpose for which this matter has been brought. Lastly, as Mr. Pika's letter states several issues of immediate concern, along with acknowledging that his letter was intended to facilitate his office participation in any application by petitioner or provisional remedy, unless he is in objection with having a hearing be held on this matter as soon as possible, I respectfully request that the temporary restraining order be granted and a hearing be scheduled in an effort to resolve this matter as equitably and efficiently as possible for the benefit of both parties. We thank the court for its kind consideration in this matter. Now, although they're saying more than likely this information will be sealed, I would like to personally know what the bank had as far as information regarding Wendy that would cause them to file an Article 81 under the New York Mental Hygiene Law Act, appointing her a guardian because they feel like she's incapacitated. And why did she become so unsound the moment someone else became unemployed as her financial advisor? And why when she came to the bank asking for her money, you advised her to get a power of attorney and have docs signed only for her to do that and you still did not her y'all know what bill she has to pay she's been banking with you for over a decade y'all couldn't at least give her that much to pay her bills like really somebody is really trying to destroy this woman i don't know about y'all but i smell a rat and i don't like it at all what i need to do is hear from y'all y'all know i've been in the comments lately we really been talking it out about this wendy williams situation so leave a comment tell me what you think about everything that's transpiring about this case and you know how we do we'll talk about it down below talk to you guys later Bye. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any of this tea.